Hey, it's Johara. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be talking about Shadow and Bone Season 2. My last video was sh sh Shadow and Bone related. And then this one, and then my next one's going to be Shadow and Bone related. Because my next video is going to be a video where I... It's basically part 2 of my last video. But right, first I want to do the Season 2 review before I talk about Six Crows, Book References, and Season 2. So I need to do the review first. And I'm... I'm very excited to talk about it. I loved season two, even more than season one. I think that's kind of my popular opinion because I've heard some criticism for it. Um, I think a lot of their issue was that they felt like it was rushed, and I get that because like they tried to cram a lot, like they crammed um, the uh, plots of book two and three of Shadow and Bone, plus the made up the storyline they had to make up for the crows, um, all into it. So. Uh, I get that. Um, but I feel like they did really well with that. I know a lot of people criticize with, um, Westbrook, but I'll get into that later because Westbrook was my favorite part. Um, first I'm going to talk about what I did in my, because it's still not perfect. There's, um, no book to TV adaptation that is perfect, but I have stated that Shadow and Bone is probably the closest thing to being, a, um, a perfect adaptation that I've seen at least. Like, not many adaptations are that faithful, and I know they did change a lot of things, but I think I've stated this before. For the most part, the things they did change, I think they improved from the original format, which, in a lot of things, that's not the, that's not the thing. It's whatever they changed made it worse, for the most part. Harry Potter, there are some things I prefer in the books, than the, or in the movies, than the books. I mean, the books are obviously better. Um, like, uh, the, how... Harry tricked da Lucius into freeing Dobby at the end of Chamber of Secrets. I far prefer the movie version than the book version. Plus, I prefer Neville's speech because in the book, all he did was say Dumbledore's army and then kill Nagini right then and there. And then chaos erupted, and that's when Harry revealed he was alive. And so nobody even saw it. I far prefer the movie version when um, Neville had that huge, that long, beautiful speech. Um, and uh, then Harry revealed he was alive, and the battle started that way, and ever, so everyone saw it. And then um, later on, when Nagini was about to kill Ron Hermione as Harry fought Voldemort, um, that's when Neville killed Nagini. Um, and I prefer um, the. I liked the entire battle. The only thing I didn't like was how like Voldemort and Bellatrix died and stuff because they were supposed to die human, not whatever the heck that was, but, um, also, I think the one movie I actually prefer as the, the entire thing, I prefer the whole Order of Phoenix movie over the book, I do still love the book, but I think they improved that book so much, first of all, the fight was so much better with them staying together and showing that they were united, and the fight wasn't such a mess, plus Sirius's character was much better, because, the book wasn't actually faithful to his character, surprisingly enough. Plus, Neville, I love the little things they added to his character, uh, which would kind of foreshadow his growing bravery and becoming the person that would help Harry, Ron, Hermione in the end stop it all. Um, so yeah, I went on a little bit Harry Potter rant. Sorry, Harry Potter is my favorite thing in the entire world. So, <laughs> but today's not about Harry Potter because I am on a Shadow and Bone high, mostly season two high, mostly Crow's high. Let's be real. Um, so there, I'm going to talk, so first I'm going to talk about the things I did not like in season two, because there were a few things that I didn't like, and I figured I will get that out of the way, and then I'll talk about what I love, because I pretty much loved most of it. There was a th few things, and th I'll first talk about what I did not like, then things that I have mixed feelings about, because it's not like I love them, and it's not like I hate them, then I'll go into what I love, which is the majority of it. So. First, what I didn't like was when the crows came into town and found out that, um, I mean, I didn't mind them being wanted for murder, but I did not like that it was t Tante Helene, because I, I wanted Inej to go after her. Like, they have a few scenes in the books that I really like, like, uh, her, like, she has stolen a necklace or something from her, and, uh, she, and it's like she was slowly trying to dupe Tante Helene, and she wanted to go after her, which I love. Um... And I feel like Inej deserves that revenge for everything Helene did to her. And I hated that when they went there, Helene was already dead and Pecker Rollins had killed her. Um, 
I have a little mixed feelings about them showing the whole Roland, Pekka Roland staying in Kaz's past. I mean, I don't mind the Kaz's past part, but um, have going ahead and uh, that's something I have mixed feelings about because I, I think they did it flawlessly. I'm just not sure it should have been done yet is the thing because I don't think it should have been done yet because I just feel like in the books, plus with the whole Pekka um, going, um, uh, helping uh, Van Eck and all that, and they had teamed up and stuff, so they had to try to stop Van Eck and Pekka Rollins, um, which made the stakes higher and stuff. Um, so I, I have mixed feelings about it because I do think it was done flawlessly, the acting and the way it was executed and everything about it was perfect. But I'm still not sure if it should have happened yet. I don't mind the Kaz's flashback so you get more of an insight in Kaz because we saw flashbacks of uh, Kaz before the Pekka Rollins thing finally went down anyways. So I don't mind them showing why Kaz hates Pekka Rollins. I just don't think the whole showdown with him should have happened quite yet. I mean, if they want to do it a little bit earlier than when they took down Van Eck so they can focus on taking down Van Eck, I'm okay with that. But still, it felt like it was a little too early for that. Um, but, like I said, that's something I just have mixed feelings about because they did it so well. And it was kind of amazing. And I was a little upset um, that Inej wasn't there during the whole uh, thing with Pekka and um, Kaz because I love that uh, Inej, Inej's reaction to uh, Kaz um, burying his son and then finding out that he didn't actually do it. Um, and this time we actually got to see Pekka try to find his son and then get arrested and then see his son alive and not, never have it been, been buried. So we didn't even see that actually go down. Um, we just saw him rush out with his men to try to dig him up. And then Kaz tells Inej how um, he never even buried him and stuff. He'll just find Dirk or whatever, however he uh, said that. Um, so I do wish Inej was there. Um, but... There was also David's death. Uh, don't get don't get me wrong. The way he died. Okay, so I ha I don't like him dying yet because him and Jenya were supposed to have um many more years together. They were supposed to get married. Well, technically elope, and then spend many years as husband and wife, and then um even have a whole big wedding where they get to renew their vows and actually have an actual wedding. Um, but. I do prefer the way he died, which is why this is something I have mixed feelings about. Because even though I don't like it happening yet, as what, just like the whole Pecola thing, I don't like it happening yet. I actually do prefer the way he died here than in Rule of Wolves. Because in Rule of Wolves, he, um, at the reception or wedding night or whatever, he uh, left to his lab to do something. I don't remember. But he went to his lab, and then the Faridans had bombed his lab. And he ended up dying, and they found him in the rubble or something. And um, so, and it felt so pointless. Like it, like it didn't even need to happen. Like the story could have still went on without David's death. Um, maybe they just wanted a tragedy or the shock value. I'm not entirely sure. But this one was just so much better for me because I m far prefer him dying to save Jenya because he loves her so much and it was sweet but i'm also sad because there's so many scenes from king if i know i know they want to make a six crow spinoff um because of uh i mean it's already in uh the works it, they're just waiting for it to get greenlit um plus the way they ended season two shows that they are trying to they are heading for a spinoff if they get greenlit but I don't know if they plan to make a King of Scars spinoff as well, um, with the whole the way Nikolai's arc ended, possibly, or they could just mix King of Scars and Six of Crows. I'm not entirely sure, um, because it seems like if there is a Six of Crows spinoff, Alina and Zoya and Jenya and uh, Nikolai, Tamara, Tolia, they'll all still be there because their arc was also unfinished, just like the Rose. Um, so yeah, but. So, but if they do make a King of Scars or anything, there's so many sweet little moments between the two of them that I really wanted to see. Like, um, they were, I don't remember what they were talking about, but they were 
talking about something, and then Jenny was trying to get David to do something, and uh, like being like neck negregating or whatever, and um a negregation. But uh, Nikolai was like, she would have done it for this, and then David looked at uh her. He was like, really? And she was like, of course not. Would you stay out of it to Nikolai? And it was cute. But um, and there's also a thing when um. Again, I only read King of Scars and Little Wolves once, but so these memories are kind of vague. But they were another scene that was really cute with the two of them. And um, uh, Jenny said something about uh, David because someone did something sweet for someone else, and uh, Jenny made a comment about David not doing that. And he was like, I'll add it to the list or something, a list, and which is cute because later on, Jenny, after his death, I think Jenny finds a list of things that David made to, um, make Jenny happy, which is really sweet, so, yeah, um, and, yeah, so, I'm really sad we won't get some of those, but, like I said, this one I have mixed feelings about, because even though I don't like him date, uh, dying, um, this early, I still prefer the way he died than in the books, so it's like, I'm not, so it's, it's like I have mixed feelings, because even though, he shouldn't have had to die yet the way he died is just so much better and so much more meaningful and even though his death made me cry in the books it was still heartbreaking in the show it's more heartbreaking because of the meaning behind his death so yeah that's why i have mixed feelings about that um i'm trying to think of something else i blatantly do not like but there's actually not that many like i said i don't like tansi helene dying and i didn't like, um, or I had mixed feelings about them showing the whole Pecker and Kaz Brecker thing and the, um, uh, David's death scene. So, um, the scene when Jenya found out that David was going to propose, that broke my heart. Just had to throw that out there. Uh, but, um, I know I, uh, The last thing I can think of off the top of my head that I just, I have mixed feelings about is, um, the ending. I mean, I love that it foreshadowed how, what each of the characters will be doing if we do get a third season or a spinoff. The crows obviously have the ice core heist going on in there. Then, um, Alina's, uh, darkness is gonna affect her, all of Ravka, her, Nikolai, Zoya, and Jenya the most, and then, um, there's the whole thing with Mel becoming Sturmond, and, um, him, uh, going, uh, private, being a privateer with Tamar, Tolia, Nadia, um, and Inej. I have mostly mixed feelings about the Inej part, because she's supposed to be with the crows, but I do... Um, think that she will still be a part of the high school heist. Uh, my guess is that she's going to show up right before the heist or something and end up uh, joining them because if they tried to do the heist without Inej, that would just be stupid and I don't think they would make that mistake. But we'll, we shall see. Um, and I also have this feeling about the whole Alina and Mel thing because Alina now has dark, the Darkling powers, which I'm okay with her having a dark arc. I just think um, I have mixed feelings about her and Mel breaking up, you know, because in the books, I know there's a lot of hate for Mel in the books, um, but I like Mel, I like him more in the show, a lot more in the show, but I still like him in the books, and I still ship him and Alina, but I actually like Lena more in the show, too, um, even, even though I liked in the books, she could be annoying at times, uh, but, um, so good Mel, to be honest, but I, I still like them both, I know I'm kind of trashing them right now, but I still like them both in the books, I just think the shows improve their characters, but, um, I think, I do think Mel and Lena will end up together if there is another season or a spinoff or whatever they end up doing, um, but, I have, and because I do believe they will be endgame, it makes me not be as upset, just because, oh, well, I'll be more upset if they end up canceling it, because then we won't get to see them become endgame, but I just felt like it was so out of character for Mel to just, like, leave and, like, he loved Alina so much, and I didn't like the thought idea where he said how um, their feelings were just because of him being um, an amplifier, and that's why he was drawn to her, because I don't buy that. Um, 
I mean, yeah, maybe that's what brought them together at the first place, but it's not what made them so close, made them best friends, made them fall in love with each other. They they were just so, there's just so much more to it and them. And um, maybe Mel will realize that when he's away. I don't know. But um, I don't feel, know how I feel about Alina being like queen. I really hope her and Nikolai don't get together. First of all, I should meet Alina and Mel. Second of all, I should meet Nikolai and Zoya. So maybe we'll get some of that as well. Um, that would be interesting. Um, and then, but my main thing is with the whole Inej thing. I also didn't like that we didn't get a Tamara Naughty kiss. Netflix has, is weird when it comes to sapphics. They just do not like it. Like, First Kill got canceled, uh, which I loved it. Warrior Nun, I never seen it, but it got canceled. And there was a lesbian couple, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they didn't, um, I don't know. So they didn't have Tamara Naughty kiss. But, uh, we did get to see them together and happy. So uh, that's okay. Um, I think that's all my issues with season. If I come up with more on my way, I'll mention them. But anyways, back to what so to what I love. Um, so there's a lot of love. I love Ginny and David. Obviously, David is my favorite character from the original trilogy, and tied to, as my favorite character with Nina in the King of Scars duology. I absolutely love David, and him and Ginny were also my favorite ship in both the original uh, Shadow and Bone trilogy and the King of Scars duology. I absolutely love him, and so before the um Shadow and Bone season two dropped, I was so hoping to get this one particular scene. If there was one scene that I could pick to be in the show from book two of Shadow and Bone, it was this scene, and they actually had this scene, and I got so excited, and it's the scene. Um, after, uh, it's revealed what the king did to Jinya and, um, her poisoning him, the king, and her conversation with the queen and all that. Um, and then David says, um, makes that whole speech, like, how he's like, I know metal, and she's like, what? And then she just goes on and says how she doesn't need fixing because she's perfect, and it's just such a beautiful scene. And I'm pretty sure that's what made them my favorite couple in the original trilogy before I read Sinus Girls, because obviously my heart belongs to Westbrook, my favorite piece ship of all time. And because the crows are, are my favorite part, the David and Jenny kind of went down a few pegs because the cr three crow ships are my favorite, but they are right after that. But anyways, David is the only character I love as much as I love the crows. Because anyone who knows me knows crows are my favorite part of the Grishaverse. And David is the only character I put as high as the crows. Because I absolutely adore him. But, um, so I was so happy when I saw that scene. Like, I wanted that scene so bad. And I got it. I was so happy. But I, it just, I ha it had me squealing. I was so excited. But anyways, <laughs> um, and, um, I'm going to talk about the Shadow and Bone people first and then the Six Crows people. That's kind of how I'm breaking up this video. So, um, so I absolutely love what they did with David and Jenny. Like I said, I have feelings about David's death just because it shouldn't have happened so early. But I already went into all that, so I'm not going to go into it again. But, um, like... The, the scenes we did get of them was just oh, so perfect. I love it. But um, Alina and Mel, they were really cute a lot of times. I'm really happy. I feel like the Shadow and Bone books are a lot slower than slower, at least in my opinion. I don't. Six Crows books are obviously my favorite in the Grisha verse. And Shadow, I don't want to say they're slower just because um, the King of Scars duology is the slowest out of all of them. I don't know how to explain it, but. Um, I was worried about them combining both books, but I think they actually did a rather good job. I still think there was room for improvement, obviously, but I'm really happy they took out um, one of my least favorite storylines, um, which is the whole love triangle of Alina, Nikolai, and Mel. I mean, it was still kind of sprinkled in there, but it wasn't to the extent. Like, I'm really glad they took out the whole Mel and Alina breaking up and Mel uh, kissing Zoya, because he was all jealous and everything, and then Alina trying to go after Nikolai, because she was hurt, and, um, I'm really, really happy they cut out all that, because I hated it, and, um, I, and I'm, so, 
maybe putting two books in one wasn't so bad uh but i am so glad they took out all that because i did not like the whole lena nikolai stuff i like the friendship they have just like i like the friendship nikolai and mel end up having in the show and yeah so i also love tamar and toya their relationship with each other plus tamar's relationship with um Nadia and Toya's relationship with the Crows, um, especially uh, Jesper and Wylan. Wylan and to Toya seem to kind of uh, connect, and then what to Toya tried to help Jesper try to, you know, make up with Wylan because he kind of says something stupid, and it was really sweet to see that. I liked him interacting with the Crows, just because I feel like with Nina, he has so much in common with the whole they both love to eat, and then with the Nedge, they both are very, very big on their faith and their religion, which is something they both can't um connect with um which that's another thing i didn't like the whole look the two of them gave at the end like i hope there's no love triangle brewing there because obviously it's a niche and cats it's always been a niche and cats and if they try something with toy i'm gonna be very upset especially since pretty much every fan i well mo i'll say most fans because i'm sure not every fan but mo a lot of fans had canon him in the books me included as arrow ace and as an arrow ace one myself it makes me happy because we don't have that much representation and we need some to the point where we have to headcanon most of our uh, representation because we hardly have any. And I was just so upset when I saw that because I didn't like it. And I, I swear if they give Toya any romantic interest, I'm going to be so upset because to me, he will always be Arrow Ace. I don't think I can get behind any relationship he's in because even though it's technically not canon because it's never said in the books and I don't think Lee Vidigo ever actually said it. I might be wrong. If I am, please let me know down in the comments. But I don't think she ever actually said it. I might be wrong, like I said. But um, it's just the way she wrote it. You know, like, the way she wrote David. I mean, a lot of people think he has autism and I'm one of them. And um, because of the way they wrote she wrote the characters so um i really hope so i really want the show to actually make it canon officially canon that he's to arrow ace and have it be i don't know said or some or have one of the creators admit it i don't know but that's what i'm hoping for we'll see if i get it um but yeah um and then, uh, but I love Tamar and Nadia's relationship. I wish we got more of them, and I hope we will in the next season or spin-off series if we get it. Um, and I love Tamar and Toya's relationship, how they love each other so much, protect one another, are always there for each other, but they also are siblings and twins. They bicker, they fight and stuff. So, yeah. Um, also, uh... And then I like the kind of trio Alina, Zoya, and Jinya made at the end. And I hope we get more of that trio. That would be fun. Um, and then moving on to the crows. This video is getting kind of long. <laughs> so I'm going to try to talk a little faster because editing is going to be hell. <laughs> um, and the crows. My favorite part, obviously. So Matthias is in uh, Hellgate the entire time. Him and Ia don't really have many scenes. Um, Nina visited Hellgate twice to see Matthias and I both times he did see her the first time he looked angry at her and before walking away and the second time she actually had papers to release him but uh that didn't go exactly as planned but um Matthias uh uh was being dragged away as so was Nina and they kind of looked at each other this time there was more it wasn't so hostile this time around at least I, that's not how I read it read it into it but who knows um but yeah so there's that we didn't get much of that and we did see Matthias several times in Hellgate when Nina wasn't even visiting so that was nice um and we got uh Nina and Wyland Wyland is a new character which I I love him he is one of my favorite crows him and Edge and Jesper they're my top three favorite characters I love them and I love Edge and Jesper's friendship I want to throw out that out there but uh, they're probably my favorite friendship besides the Six Crows as a bunch, as a group. But yeah, um, and I absolutely love Wyland. I think uh, Jack Wolf did amazing. Um, he was just so Wyland the entire time, and I loved it. Um, and uh, with Nina, Nina is um, 
she was in last season, obviously, because her and Matthias had their storyline that was apart from the rest of the storyline. But uh, Nina is a part of the Crows now. She's officially a Crow, and she helps and she helped them a lot. Uh, I liked the little. It didn't give much. In, there wasn't many Nina and Inez scenes, but I did love their friendship in the books. And, but and we did get a little bit, a little taste of it. So maybe we'll see more of them in the spinoff or season three or whatever they end up doing. But um, like when Inez was her and Nina helped her in, and then um, Nina had you know taken care of her while she was uh, injured and all that. That was nice. Um, and we did. Uh, get some iconic things from the Six Crows books, like there was the talk with Catherine and Nedge about stay, stay in Canada, stay with me, um, and Nedge was like, I'll have you, Cass Berger, without armor, or I will not have you at all, um, and then, um, there was also the scene when Nedge, uh, Kaz was kind of helping Nedge with her wounds, which is a lot like the scene in Crooked Kingdom when he was basically doing that, um, and then there's, um, uh, with Jesper and Wyland, there was uh, Jesper telling him he kind of liked his face, which is a lot like the iconic line, which he said twice. I like your stupid face, which is really sweet. And then the scene right before their first kiss in the show um, reminded me so much of the scene in Crooked Kingdom when they were about to separate for their next task at hand about so they can, you know, with everything that was going on. And... Um, Jesper Wyland was asking if he liked all, all of this, you know, the fight after the next fight and all this. And Jesper was like, honestly, yes, uh, this is the life I want. But then he kind of like grabs uh, Wyland's satchel and fixes the strap and kind of pulls him close and is like, but that's not all I want. It's such a sweet moment. It's probably, it is one of my favorite Whisper moments in the book. And that scene, uh, besides, you know, that scene just reminded me so much of it. And yeah, so. I feel so many times, but, um, Cassidy and Edge is pretty good. I love how they, um, are, like, they want each other so much, but they're still not at the point where they can be together, um, because they both still have so much trauma that they have not dealt with, but they were still done perfectly. And their scenes were just so good. I love the scenes when Kaz was worrying about Nedge, but he couldn't bring himself to get too close to her as usual, like um, near the end of season um, two when Inej came uh, by after helping Alina. And then uh, Cass was obviously worried and they kind of had the stare contest for a minute before Jesper ran to hug Inej. So yeah. And then, um, and then, uh, so they were done pretty well. Um, I love, and Nina and her food, she's still obsessed with food, which I love. And I love the, when they were trying to plan, like, how to get into the building or find out which building they needed to get into. And Nina w talked to the waitress and came back with all the information and they all stared at her, like, seriously? Like, it was hilarious. Such such an epic scene. Uh, and it just was like, I kind of like her. <laughs> but, yeah. And then my favorite part was obviously Westfer. Well, my favorite part is the Crows, but Westfer especially. Because they were my favorite ship from the books, from all the Greek shippers books. I absolutely adore them. And I know the pe some people didn't like the direction they went with Westfer, but I actually did because they were still Westfer. Jesper was still very much Jesper. Wylan was still very much Wylan. And Westfer was still Westfer. They're just together. And I actually liked that they get together earlier because. Even though I love a good slow burn, I get annoyed because so many books, TV shows, and movies do this where they, the couples are apart more than they're together. Whether they don't get together at all until the very end or they break up a million times to the point where it feels like they're broken up more than they're together, which short changes the fans because the fans and at least me and I know my mom because we talk about this a lot, want our ships to be together. They, we want them to be happy, and yes, we want, we don't mind if there being drama, but that doesn't mean every little turmoil the show has to break up and be broken up for half a season or an entire season before getting back together, you know? And it's just, it's ridiculous. It's like, seriously? And, um, it just, it gets on my nerves, and even though I love Westbrook in the books, obviously they're my favorite ship, 
And I don't love Westbrook more in the show, but I don't love Westbrook more in the books either. I love them pretty equally. The only thing I did like more in the show was the fact that we actually got to see them as a couple, which we didn't really get in the books because they didn't get together until the end of Crook Kingdom, right before the final big heist. And so that was like at the very end. So we, what did we get? The only time we actually got them as a couple was when they kissed, which, and then at uh, Wyland's uh, dad's house uh, right before they found out about Matthias. That's all we really got of them as a couple. And no, I'm not okay with that. I mean, I, I love the, the slow burn I do, and I love a lot of the scenes we got because of the slow burn. Um, but, but, I love seeing them a couple. And even though they were a couple, they were still Wyland and Jesper, you know, they still had that fight when Jesper said something stupid, and then when he tried to make it better, Wyland said something stupid, and so, yeah. Um, so they still ha fought a bit, and they still had their bantering, they still bickered, they still teased, and they still flirted, okay? They just did that as a couple, which I actually prefer, and I loved it. I loved every Whisper scene we got, and like I said, there's some Whisper scenes that reminded me so much of some scenes from the book, some of my favorite scenes, um, and I absolutely loved everything we got, and these scenes, I'm so excited to start editing Whisper, I'll be doing very many Whisper edits soon. Um, I have two edits planned that I've started but not finished, which I'm going to be doing soon, so, um, which is a Soy Luna one with a Luna Simone and, um, I almost said Amber, not Amber, uh, Nina, with the song Triple Up from Monster High the Movie, so, um, I'll be doing that one first because it won't be as long. The song is only like two minutes. But then I have a, uh, I don't remember what song I, ha I have planned for the other edit at the moment. But it's for Caroline and Stefan from The Vampire Diaries. I've already done a couple edits from them with these songs. Um, uh, I forgot the first, oh, Trust from All Side of the Movie. And with the song, um, What Do You Mean to Me from Star Starstruck. And I don't remember what song I have planned for them for this one, unfortunately. But um because i got it all ready but then just completely forgot about it and i've been sick until recently so um i just wasn't doing much of anything so yeah i haven't done it yet but i'll be doing those edits soon today or tomorrow so that i can get them done because i'm ready to do the west bread I, ha I have everything i need to do the west bread and i'm excited i just need to find the right songs to do for them but i'll probably be doing several west bread before i move on because right now i'm on a west high like all my mind thinks is west and crows so yeah, um, I'm completely obsessed and I'm completely in love with them. And I just feel like they were done so perfect. And I love them in the books, I always will. But I also love them in the show just as much. And I love the direction it took because now we actually get to see them as a couple, which is something we didn't get in the book, which is something I've been dying to me, which is why I've been wanting to make fan fiction for a while. I just haven't gotten around to it because I took a break from fan fiction, mostly because I was working on my own books that I published. But I have been getting a little bit back into my fanfiction era because I've been making a fanfiction of Henny one-shots. Henny is the ship of Ginny and Harry from Harry Potter, for those that didn't know. And they're my favorite ship, and they're also an underrated ship. So I've just been doing a bunch of one-shots about the two of them lately because I really miss Henny, and I've been thinking about rereading Harry Potter. So yeah, and I want to do a fanfiction of Six Crows because... I've been wanting to do that for a while because I want to see Jesper and Wyland as a couple. And now I finally get it. Jesper and Wyland as a couple. And I'm just obsessed with every scene we got. They were just so perfect. And Jesper and Wyland's chemistry on point. Their character arcs separately and together on point. They were just so Jesper and Wyland and Wesper from the books. Whether or not, even though they got together sooner and they weren't a slow burn, they were still very much the same Wesper we, I fell in love with in the books. They just got together sooner and less angst, which I'm okay with. But, I mean, for the people that uh, are upset that they won't have issues and stuff, they still will. Let's be real. If they, we do get the Six of Crows spinoff or Season 3 or however they end up doing it, um, and we, the Ice School Heist, there's finding out that Wyland's last name is actually Van Eck, which means he's the son of Jan Van Eck, which means he's been lying to Jesper, which is going to cause some problems. And then there's also the whole Cooey drama that's gonna happen so we're still gonna get plenty of angst for people who want that part of whisper but i'm okay without that part of whisper we need more of gay couples happy okay because we don't get that much enough at least I, I don't so yeah um 
but I loved every second of it. I loved um, the Shadow Bone characters, the crows especially, and Westbrook especially, because Westbrook is my favorite part of the books, of the show, of everything. And I'm so excited to start making Westbrook edits, so be ready for that. Because they will be coming once I get the Sword Luna one. Once you see the Sword Luna one and the um, uh, Stairline one uh, published, then you know that my Westbrook ones are coming. I still have to look through Spotify and try to figure out what songs will work best for them. And their arc in season two, but I'm ready and I'm excited. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that is all. Like I said, I loved it. Um, well, I was mostly talking about the characters I did and relations. I didn't even really get into the actual storyline, did I? But I love the final fight. I loved the grand entrance with the crows. Like, I loved Alina sh uh, Inej showing up and saving Alina at the last minute. That was really awesome because Inej is awesome. And then I loved the scene with Tamara and Tolia when Tamara could sense Tolia. And then he shows up. It was so awesome. And I love the scene when um, Kaz, Jesper, and Wyland show up. And uh, that was awesome. And then Wyland and his uh, bombs. Uh, it was just awesome. And so the fighting was awesome. The storyline was awesome. Like I said, I do have a couple uh, things I wasn't a fan of. Like Tante Helen, Helene dying. I did not like at all. Then I have mixed feelings about David's death. And... Um, the whole Pekka Rollins thing happening at this point. Um, I don't know. Maybe he's going to break out of, of Hellgate. I mean, he's already kind of running Hellgate. So maybe he'll break out. And then he will still be something they have to stop. And he'll work with Dan Van Eck. Who knows? Honestly. I mean, I have a feeling this is in the last we'll see of Pekka Rollins. Since he's running things inside Hellgate. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see. But yeah, I liked so much of it like i like the crows part and the shadow bone part and how they merged and um the scene when wyland was just loving and being mesmerized by the butterflies and then he fed them to his friends <laughs> that scene was like did they just eat butterflies and my mom was like yes and i was like wow that scene was, I don't even know. Like, he was talking about how beautiful these creatures were. And then he was like, oh, hey, let's feed them to my friends. That scene had me cracking. I was like, I'm not, I, oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> but, like I said, I loved it Um, for the most part. I mean, it's not a perfect adaptation. I don't think this is ever going to be a perfect book to TV adaptation. Like, they always want to change things. But, like I said, with Shadow Bone, for the most part, a lot of changes I actually think are better and yeah so uh that is all for now uh please like subscribe and comment your uh, how you felt about season two of shadow and bone your favorite parts your favorite scenes your favorite ships characters whatever and i'll let you know um i'll chat with you guys below in the comments and talk to you guys next time